Good people, welcome to the Basketball Society podcast. This is Martin Soares, and I want to talk about two different point guard situations in the NBA. First, I want to react to Drew Holiday getting traded to Boston. He was part of the Damian Lillard trade initially. He went to Portland, and Portland moved him over to Boston. And then I want to talk about Bradley Beal on the Phoenix Suns. I never got to react to that move by Phoenix picking up Bradley Beal. Um, and Phoenix added a couple new players in that um, Damian Lillard trade recently, too. So um, I want to give my thoughts on on Beal as the lead guard, point guard on Phoenix and Drew Holiday and his point guard impact on the Boston Celtics. Uh, before we get into things, make sure you are subscribed wherever you're listening from. If you're on the YouTube channel, please subscribe to the channel. And if you're on Apple Podcasts, Make sure you're subscribed to the show and stay tapped in for more episodes. And please do. I would appreciate it. Leave a rating and review of the show down below. Um, That would be much love and much appreciated. So um, let's get into this Drew Holiday move to Boston. I truly feel like this is exactly what Boston needed. They've been experimenting with this no point guard system, um, which is kind of interesting because that's where I'm going to go when we talk about Bradley Beal on Phoenix. But, um, I I mean, Boston has, has been right there. They, they were in the finals a couple years ago against Golden State. Um, they're, I want to talk about Drew Holiday going to the Boston Celtics and Bradley Beal on Phoenix. I never really got to react to Phoenix picking up Bradley Beal And I want to talk about these two situations because they're new point guards, lead guards in situations um, that are that are kind of different. But I want to talk about these two point guard situations, Drew Holiday in Boston, Bradley Beal in Phoenix. All right, good people. Welcome to the Basketball Society podcast. This is Martin Soares, and I want to have as many basketball conversations with you as possible. So make sure you are subscribed to the show wherever you're listening from. And also check out the YouTube channel for video episodes and even more content from Basketball Society. Thank you for being a part of the Basketball Society podcast family. Stay tapped in. The Drew Holiday pickup for Boston is exactly what I feel like they needed. They've been experimenting with this whole non-point guard thing for a while. I know a lot of people... um, have been saying that essentially they re- they replaced Marcus Smart um and in a sense that's true they they have they they were able to bring in an elite top tier perimeter guard defender um which is what Marcus Smart is and um and and now he's in Memphis who I think it could really use him especially not having John Morant the first part of the season Boston has has had this system where they share the point guard responsibilities. And it's interesting because that's that's what we're going to talk about with Bradley Beal on Phoenix. That's kind of their model now. But um and Boston's been they they got to the finals last year against Golden State. They they've been right there. They've been one of the top teams in the East. Uh J- Jason Tatum is still young in his mid twenties, still ascending as one of the top players in the league. Just Jalen Brown, same thing, still ascending. Um, and it, it did seem like kind of a setback not having Marcus Smart because of that that defensive backbone and that leadership that he brought to that group. He just he felt like just as much a part of that core as Tatum or Brown or, or Horford. Um, and, you know, the Porzingis thing, of course, is like a huge question mark. Um, I'm kind of a fan of it because my big thing that I really went into with Boston um, when they did lose in the finals to Golden State, Boston was starting to look look championship ready. I mean, they they competed in that finals. They were they belonged there. I felt like they needed to get a little more dynamic. And I had even said, I remember saying, and I wasn't fully advocating for it, but just as an example, like they have a player like Peyton Pritchard on their bench, who hasn't really played much. It looks like he may play a little more this season for them, but. Peyton Pritchard is he he makes things happen. If you if you have seen Peyton Pritchard hoop, that that he can flat out hoop, and um, he may still be figuring things out. But just at the guard position, 
I felt like they could get a little more dynamic, maybe add a little more shooting. And I think Porzingis makes Boston more dynamic than they've been. Like Porzingis at his best and healthy is is a more athletic, taller, more mobile, younger, better version of Al Horford as a stretch big um, that can put it on the floor, that can that can protect the rim. Porzingis healthy and at his best is going to make Boston look totally different. And so now when I look at their best five positionally, I, I adding now they have Drew Holiday at point guard, who is a true point guard. I do think, and again, we're going to get to Bradley Beal and Phoenix and not to give it away, but I feel like their model of a no point guard thing is going to work based on their personnel. I think Boston's model of a no point guard no traditional point guard system or even a point guard at all system where different guys share the responsibility, Derek White, Jason Tatum, Marcus Smart, that's fine and that works. And I think they they had good enough players to do that. But when you looked at their deficiencies, it, it did seem like and on those possessions where things would kind of get out of whack when they didn't have great organization or structure, it seemed like they didn't really – know what they were doing and they kind of just leave it up to Tatum or Brown to get them a shot, it would it would just scream off of the television like, yo, they really could just use a real point guard. Um, they had Malcolm Brogdon doing some of that last season, um, but, but Drew Holiday is a true point. Marcus Smart, to me, is more of a combo guard, which means he can play point guard roles he can he can play he can take on some point guard responsibilities but that's not his true position I feel Drew Holiday is a is a true point guard and based on what we know he can do as an elite two-way player Drew Holiday is going to make Boston look look better than they've looked in the last few years and you combine that with Porzingis I just think that four of Drew Tatum Brown Porzingis is is more dynamic than what Boston had last year going up against the Warriors in the finals that this is I think this is their most dynamic group that they've had um, around Tatum and Brown so it, it's interesting how things moved around now Drew's on Boston Dame is on the east coast in Milwaukee so you know Milwaukee's championship point guard is now with Boston um, it's it's interesting the top two teams in the east really changed um, and it's going to be interesting to see who kind of wins out because they, they both made major changes. And the fact that one of them had their, their championship point guard go to the other team, that that's, that's, uh, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> that's really kind of crazy, but Drew Holiday and Porzingis, both healthy and at their best. They, I, I think they are exactly the kind of pieces and players that, um, that take Boston to a championship level. I think that's really what they needed. So let's move on to Bradley Beal in Phoenix. I never got to talk about this. Phoenix might be the most skilled team in the league. And um, I, I, that that's not just Bradley Beal, but it's their their two latest additions out of the, in the uh, Damian Lillard trade. They picked up Grayson Allen from Milwaukee and Nurkic from Portland. So they got rid of Ayton who's in Portland now, and Phoenix now has Nurkic, and, and they got Grayson Allen from Milwaukee. Nurkic and Allen are are both, they, they can both shoot the ball. They're, they're both really good offensive role players. They're skill guys. Um, Grayson can shoot the ball, and uh, Nurkic can shoot the ball. He can score inside, outside. I mean, he's, he, he's really a stretch big, but he, he can score it inside too. Really good touch, good feel. Um, not known for being elite defensively, obviously much different from Aiton in that sense, but from a skill standpoint, Nurkic is giving you a lot more to work with offensively than, than Aiton ever, ever, well, ever, I don't want to say ever could. Aiton has things to offer offensively. I'm just from a skill standpoint, like you can kick it to Nurkic in the corner. He he'll hit for one, he'll hit the corner three. He can hit threes and he can go off the dribble and get crafty. He has good footwork and good touch around the rim. Just a little, just more crafty than a player like Aiton. Going to the point guard situation for Phoenix, they had Chris Paul, who is the, the point guard, right? Um, but but he's gotten older. Um, when Phoenix got Kevin Durant, I talked about 
the that dynamic. And it's crazy because now Phoenix has really changed already too. Um, they changed their head coach. They've got Frank Vogel now. Um, but now Phoenix has really changed because I when they got KD, I said, look, Chris Paul and Aiton really determine how how like how much at that point I was talking about is this a super team? But my 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 take was that like they're only as good as you think Chris Paul and Aiton are right now. Like if Chris Paul was in his prime, then yeah, Chris Paul, Devin Booker, and KD would sound way different. Even if KD was in his prime. The only one out of them who's in their prime is really Devin Booker. Um, KD's still playing high level basketball, but in terms of being in their prime, it's 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 only Booker. Swapping out Chris Paul for Bradley Beal is is a big deal. <laughs> it's a big deal. It's so different from Boston, right? Like there's really a contrast here. That's why I wanted to talk about these two situations because Boston Boston needed a point guard. They could have used Chris Paul for that matter. Um they they uh, they could have maybe swung for Damian Lillard. I mean, they needed really a a legit sound point guard leader um who can score you need a point guard who can score nowadays uh but but someone who really plays the position phoenix had that phoenix had chris paul now he's gotten older he did get hurt during the playoffs which which you know was always kind of a concern with him late in the season but like i said i had said like listen chris paul is most likely to go down and i felt like the kd adding KD for Phoenix was the ultimate insurance because you almost expect Chris Paul to go down. Chris Paul and Devin Booker as a backcourt has been fired. They got to the finals two years ago, lost to Giannis. Chris Paul, Devin Booker, Aiton. I mean, that's a that's a really good foundation. But it, depending on, again, how much confidence you have in Aiton to really become a dominant big man, Chris Paul's not getting any younger and he's injury prone. So adding KD to that mix to me just made, I mean, it made great sense for Phoenix really to team him up with Booker. Not to say Chris Paul and Aiton were obsolete, but I was just seeing them as like, I don't know. I don't, I, again, even when I reacted, I said, I don't see it as a big four because I don't, Aiton's not dominant to me right now. So adding KD to that mix, I wasn't screaming super team or big four. I'm like, no, they've got a big two. They've got a star duo, and they've got a Hall of Fame point guard and a and a good big man. And that's not the same as a super team or or a big four to me. But when you look at Bradley Beal being at point guard for Phoenix, and again, that for them it's not gonna be, it doesn't they probably won't even call it point guard. Maybe they will, but they're gonna be sharing point guard responsibilities. Um, I did see they lost campaign to Milwaukee. So that's a good that's a good signing for Milwaukee having a a really good backup for Dame there. But when you look at Bradley Beal, Booker and Durant right now, like even the fact that Durant is a is a little older, um can be injury prone, Bradley Beal almost becomes insurance for that because listen, Beal and Booker as a backcourt is dangerous as as great as Chris Paul and Devin Booker were as a backcourt, especially at first when they first linked up, I'm like, no, that's fire. The sound of that is just excellent. Booker's going to benefit. Chris Paul can use the help as far as having a a backcourt mate that can really score the ball in elite level shooting guard. I was so hyped for both of them to play together. Bradley Beal and Devin Booker understand that is a completely different and way more dynamic backcourt pairing. I mean, Bradley Beal is younger, shoots the three better than Chris Paul. Mid-range, I mean, Chris Paul has always been a master of the mid-range and, and can still get to that right elbow on a dime off the snake of the pick and roll. Will still get to that right elbow and ri- raise up on you still. Bradley Beal may not be a point god, right? He hasn't played a whole lot of point guard. He's probably more naturally a shooting guard, just like Devin Booker. Bradley Beal can play in the pick and roll. He he's he's a playmaker. He's a plenty good enough playmaker to to and and Bradley Beal. If I don't know if you've ever heard him talk or just like seen his temperament as a player, he's definitely to me strikes me as the type where he's ready and willing to be unselfish, especially playing with guys like Devin Booker and Kevin Durant. In fact, I'm pretty sure Beal might even fall into. Um, this zone where like your guys have to kind of remind you who you are 
I mean, they're a big three now. That's a that's a legit big three to me. Bradley Beal, Devin Booker, Kevin Durant. That's that's a big three. This is a better version of KD's big three he had in Brooklyn with Kyrie and Harden. This is a better version. I just think they're a little less high maintenance, a little more low maintenance than guys like Kyrie or Harden. I think we should all be really excited to see Bradley Beal play basketball, play meaningful basketball with other high level stars. Durant and Booker are going to have to remind him and encourage him to be like, yo, we know you're trying to be unselfish and run the show and get us our looks, but we need you getting off as well. In a big three, there's they, everyone throws out the same words, sacrifice, betterment of the team, all the all the good stuff that, you know, the stars that are willing to sacrifice, they talk about doing and, and they end up doing. You take less shots than you're used to. You know, those those things are going to happen, but you still have to perform. You still have to be a big time player just because you're on a team with one or two other stars. Yeah, it, the game becomes easier. But look, Dame, Dame still has to be Dame in Milwaukee, <laughs> even though he's playing with Giannis and Chris Middleton best team he's probably been on I mean he's he Dame still has to average over 20 a game it may not have to be 28 a game just to be competitive you know but that's the thing it may have to only be 23 or 24 or 25 right but he's still got he's still got to be Dame and he's still gonna have to have big games and big moments and big performances so Bradley Beal has a chance to not only show that he's a high IQ, unselfish player that can play a little point guard and it can be more of a combo guard, point guard, as opposed to just a flat out scorer and shooting guard, which again, if you've watched Bradley Beal play, you already know he can do that. He not only has to do that, he also has to continue to be who he is as a scorer. That's going to be the scariest version of Phoenix. If they're able to find the kind of consistency um, and rhythm offensively where Beal is they're able Beal's getting his looks, Booker's in rhythm getting his looks, and KD is floating getting his looks. I mean, all three of these guys can shoot, can handle it, can make plays. That's why it's it's crazy how it's just a it's like a modified version of the Brooklyn big three. Already KD and Booker have a sample size of playing together of how how lethal they can be. Um, and that was, I would say, on the level of, if not better than what we saw with KD and Kyrie. We didn't see as much of KD and Harden together um, at full strength. We didn't see as much of any of them together, really. But KD and Kyrie at full strength, the little bit we saw of that was was very scary. KD and Booker might 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 have looked scarier than that. <laughs> Going up against Denver in the playoffs, like they won those two games just off the strength of KD and, and Booker's shot making. So, and, and they seem to be like, really good friends now building a relationship. So they're, they're going to be already in rhythm and swing. They're, they're a little more used to each other. Bradley Beal's got to come in and establish himself. And then again, they have these new, they have some new pieces. They, they're they a little deeper now, better rotation players, added shooting, added a little more skill. Phoenix might be the most skilled team in the league across the board. Their big three might be the most skilled and, and, you know, Durant, being the forward of that big three because they're a smaller big, they're basically a guard big three. Durant has a lot of defensive and even physical um, responsibilities that he's going to have to take on, especially since they just lost Aiton. Durant's going to really have to take on responsibility on both ends um, as a leader to really set the tone for them as the forward of the big three, of their big three. Because Beal and Booker, that's a lot of guard you know, shot. That's a lot of work on its own. And, 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 and here's another thing too. I know people have been talking about like the whole mid range, like obviously Beal Booker, KD, they're known for mid range. I know they're all great in the mid range. They thrive there. They all score there, but that they can all sh- hit the three too. Like, I don't know why people assume that, Oh, that, you know, they, they all shoot in the mid range, but have you, have you watched them shoot? Like, don't, don't, <laughs> All these guys hit threes too. Like it's one thing if you're talking about Jimmy Butler, right? Um, even Kawhi Leonard, there are certain guys who literally live in the mid range and they don't shoot threes at all. Like, but there are guys who are really good in the mid range. They're also really good from three. And all three of these guys on Phoenix, Beal, Booker, Durant, 
are are exactly that. Katie's big three with Golden State, him, Steph, Clay, you're not going to get better than that shooting wise. Shooting wise, you are not going to get a better big three than that. You could kind of compare this to that, but I feel like I do think that Beal, Booker, Durant is almost a high. It's kind of a hybrid of of the Brooklyn big three and the Golden State big three that KD was a part of. It's kind of a hybrid because I see Beal and Booker as like the best, like like kind of the best of both worlds. Like they're shooting and playmaking. Steph, Clay, KD was like mainly shooting. Kyrie Harden, KD, you're just thinking scoring, right? You're mainly just thinking scoring and like playmaking too. Um, Beal Booker Durant is fascinating to me. I can't wait to see it. And I think I think Bradley Beal is, is really going to be the key. I think he's qualified for it, more than qualified. Um, I think he's he's probably set up. It's, it's, he's easily playing his most meaningful basketball, um, depending on how much of a rhythm he can find and how well Frank Vogel does um, just with with them offensively because they should be the best offensive team in the league, in my opinion. Bradley Beal, he, he could be playing his best basketball, not just his most meaningful basketball. Thank you so much for listening. This is the Basketball Society Podcast. Again, if you're on Apple Podcasts, make sure you leave a rating and review of the show. I would really appreciate it. Subscribe wherever you're listening from. If you're on YouTube, subscribe to the channel. If you're on Apple Podcasts, subscribe to the show and stay tapped in for more episodes. Basketball season is upon us and it's time to tap in. This is Martin Sores. Much love to you. Talk to you guys next time.